day. I am H. Robert Silverstein, MD, for the Preventive Medicine Center and West Hartford Cable Access TV. Uh, it is the holiday season, and so we're going to talk about some of those things. As a matter of fact, uh, I have to have um, an agenda for the show now. I used to come in here and be, quote, freewheeling. I could talk about whatever was on my mind, whatever, medicine, politics, whatever. Uh, but now my agenda is, let's see, latest medical topics and wellness, including diabetes, cardiovascular, and blood pressure control, and the role of holiday eating takes in these diseases. Now, my secretary had made that up for me. My secretary is Jackie. She's wonderful. I can't say enough good things about her. But um, uh, anyhow, we're still going to play a little show and tell to start. Now, this is argon oil, A-R-G-A-N. This is wonderful for the skin, as is aromatic body butter. Uh, the story of argan oil is a little complex. I'm not going to go through it, but it's really interesting. Uh, this is from the Dead Sea in Israel. These two skin treatments are absolutely wonderful for almost everything of the skin. Now, uh, of course, the word of caution, be careful what you do, so on and so on. But I think that uh, if you have skin irritations of almost any variety, they'll get better with either this, uh, pretty much for the face, because it's not, uh, it's a liquid, by the way. Uh, it has a dropper in it. And this one is a tub, uh, which has a cream in it. Next. When you take antibiotics, I routinely have forever recommended taking probiotics between doses. The usual antibiotics that I use are um, uh, Cipro, Ciprofloxin, Cipro, and a Z-Pak, azithromycin. Fortunately, both of those are 12-hour apart dosing. Uh, there is a form of, quote, Cipro, a floxin, that is once a day. It's called Levaquin, Levofloxin. And then there's another one that's once a day that I don't recall. Um, and um, the point being that you don't want to take the probiotic, which is the friendly bacteria that gets knocked out by the antibiotic. You don't want to take it at the same time. You want to take it separated. So what I tell patients is if, for instance, you're taking your azithromycin, which is what's in a Z-Pak, uh, by the way, I prescribe it differently than almost all other doctors, but it is a standard way of prescribing it. Instead of two the first day and then one a day for four or five more days, I say one twice a day for three days. You get the same dose in. It's a very long-acting medication, lasts the 10 days, and that is a standard format regardless of what your pharmacist tells you. So if it's 12 hours apart, then let's say the Cipro or the z -Pak, azithromycin is going to be eight in the morning and eight in the evening. Then you take the probiotic to replenish the bowel friendly bacteria, the biome, microbiome in the bowel, in the intestines at noon and bedtime. So antibiotic, 8 a.m., 8 p.m., probiotic, noon and bedtime. Now, that's the best guess. I never saw that written up as such. And by the way, I recommend two of these twice a day. Enough of that. This is a pain-relieving medication, uh, which has sort of caught my attention. It's sold by Life Extension Foundation. It may be sold by other groups. It was recently on sale. Um, and um, I like to have this around as a demonstration. You take one twice a day. Um, it's not, by the way, about supplements, vitamins, minerals, herbs, supplements, medications. One of the things I wrote that is a little too smart for me, uh, that I wrote it, is all drugs are poison, including the ones I prescribe, including vitamins, minerals, herbs, and supplements. Be well, use as few as possible. There should be no need for pain medication. There should be no need for an antibiotic. There should be no need for a probiotic. If you're eating correctly and doing things correctly, now occasionally bad luck happens. Uh, I don't know what happened to me about a year ago. Uh, actually, not a year ago. It was like February or March. Some virus hit me, and you may say, well, it was the flu. It wasn't like the flu. I didn't have a runny. I just had a runny nose. I didn't have anything. I didn't have cough. I didn't have a sore throat. I didn't have diarrhea. I wasn't nauseated. I was just generally weak. Uh, I had had a version of the flu shot. 
All right, enough of that. Let's uh, move forward. Um, okay, dietary approaches to the prevention for to the prevention and treatment of prostate cancer. Now they say things in here. Let's see which one. Yep, they say things in here that I've said for a very long time. Eggs predisposed to cancer of the prostate, dairy products predisposed to cancer of the prostate, and I always say dairy products also predispose to cancer of the breast, uterus, uh, ovaries, as well as bunions, uh, breast adenomas, and so on. Um, there are people who love their dairy products. I know people who sleep wonderfully when they drink their, I don't know whether it's kefir or kefir or other milk product. Uh, what about raw milk? I'm not going to get into that. That's a person's choice. I sort of think if you don't catch some bad disease, it's better for you than the pasteurized milk. There was a fellow, a physician down near Greenwich, uh, Bridgeport somewhere, years ago who just railed about pasteurized milk and how bad the pasteurization process pasteurization, homogenization, maybe it was one or both, but regardless, that brings up the concept of raw, unpasteurized milk and unhomogenized. So um, if I were going to drink milk, that's what I would do, but it is taking a bit of a chance. On the other hand, it seems to be you know readily available at Whole Foods, at Trader Joe's. By the way, Trader Joe's is so much more economical than Whole Foods. I encourage people to shop at Trader Joe's. Yes, uh, Whole Foods has much greater variety and Whole Foods is a real service to the community. But my goodness, uh, the joke about them being whole paycheck is uh, correct. So anyhow, uh, it also talks in here, this by the way is from Life Extension Foundation. Um, and uh, this is from their magazine. It says something that I sort of remember, then I forget, then I remember. It says, drink pomegranate juice to prevent cancer of the prostate. By the way, I think I want to bring up an idea. Oh, I am so smart. I just am so smart. Now, I'm just making fun of me, making fun of me. I've come up with a new phrase. Um, in the past, I've talked about the concept, which I've always thought was very smart. Diseases occur if and only if a person with a genetic predisposition does what is necessary to express that genetic tendency. Now, I'm not going to reword all of it. That's the opening to the first handout uh, that I give my patients when they come to me as a new patient. And um, the concept behind that is diseases are made to happen. They don't just fall on you. Diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, high triglycerides, diverticulosis, colon polyps, uh, much of arthritis and depression, cancer of the colon, cancer of the pancreas, uh, cancer of the prostate, cancer of the breast, uh, cancer of the esophagus. Um, these conditions are made to happen. And if we don't make them happen, we don't have those conditions. Now, what I just said is essentially, but not absolutely true. It is essentially true that we make these conditions. Now, what's essentially mean? Essentially means somewhere between 80 and 99 percent. There are a group of diabetics who are very thin, uh, usually young, who all of a sudden get diabetes. That's called autoimmune diabetes. It used to be called juvenile. It's also called type 1. Um, two types, type 1 and type 2. Type 2 is the kind that is induced by being overweight. Anybody with overweight-induced diabetes has made it happen, and my clear implication is it can be made to go away. Change what you do, reduce the weight, the diabetes, the high blood pressure, the high cholesterol, the high triglycerides resolves and goes away. I can't tell you in my many, 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 many years of practice how many, 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 many people I've had clear up their cholesterol, clear up their triglycerides, clear up their diabetes, clear up their high blood pressure. And when I say clear up, I mean they don't have it anymore. 
Um, the medical community doesn't like the idea of, quote, curing, quote, high blood pressure, uh, diabetes in particular. They like to call it in remission. Uh, no, it's cured. It's cured because it's no longer being made to occur, made to happen. Don't make it happen. It doesn't happen. And the reversal process is generally what is correct for our human biology. Do we have fangs and claws? Oh, maybe we can show this. Maybe we can't. I'm pulling up my camera. I'm getting some pictures here. Now, I don't know that you can see this, but I'll put it up there. No, I don't think you can see it. Yes, you can see that. Uh, and what that is, is the mouth of a dog. Those teeth are sharp all the way to the back. That jaw comes down like a scissors, not like ours, comes down like a scissors to tear meat. That animal has fangs and claws. We have an enzyme, okay, that's it. We have an enzyme in our salivary glands for digesting plant food. Our jaw comes down to grind like a horse or a cow or a chimpanzee or a gorilla or a goat. We live in an essentially vegan, vegetarian body. Now, the quality of mercy is not strained. It droppeth as the dew from the heavens. That's uh, Portia in Shakespeare's The Merchant of Venice. I'm not saying you have to be radical or mean about this. You can be gentle like the dew dropping from the heaven. And what I'm really saying is that, uh, uh, sure, if you're lean and trim and you look down at your tummy and you can see where the muscles meet the muscles on your tummy, then you could have wild caught fish or free range chicken or cage free eggs or bison or for Thanksgiving turkey uh, about twice a week. The other 19 of 21 meals a week should be unprocessed whole foods vegetarian because that is what is right for our biology and that is what does not make diseases happen. Diseases are made to happen. That's my big phrase. All right, going on. Gee, I hope I'm coming across okay. One thing about the Life Extension Foundation is they always have these astounding articles that want to bring you to action right away. This one says, curcumin starves cancer cells to death. Wow. Curcumin and what else? Uh, they want it put together with something else. Curcumin, no, that's Life Extension Mix. Curcumin, advanced bio curcumin. No, that's not the right one. Hmm. Anyhow, they tell you in this article about what goes with what, and they say that curcumin, when paired with, I know, I know, I know, I'm really fooling around here, uh, oh, I can't quickly find it, so I'm sorry about that. Um, circadian sleep, sleep and uh, aging. Uh, I think that using melatonin is not a bad idea, as long as you don't use too high a dose. I had a patient who was taking not a particularly high dose, but he went from two and a half to five milligrams, and he, he said he started to become angry when he was, he was just shorter fuse, angrier with people at five milligrams. Now maybe he b did it too quickly, but two and a half milligrams seems to work pretty decently in helping people get a healthy sleep. Uh, half time, okay. Now, um, this one is particularly important. Uh, it's amazing to see these really high-tech, complex ideas get into the um, standard civilian literature. And this one is about getting rid of dead cells, dead tissue in the body. The word for that is autophagy, self-eat, and uh, what we do is we clear up the senescent, too old, dying, withering cells in our body because when those hang around, they make bad chemicals that create problems. So what is it? Now remember, Life Extension Foundation is not an educational institution. Yes, it is an educational institution, but they are in business to sell supplements. Do I have it? Yeah, I have the, 
this supplement, this Comfort Max for pain, which is, uh, what's the name? Palmito ethanolamide, PEA. Palmito ethanolamide is the active substance. They sell that product to treat pain. Now, this autophagy idea today is, uh, let's see, I think they want, um, I am doing a terrible job today. Senolytics major advances. My goodness. Oh, combat aging. Senolytic activator is their product. And uh, let's see. Oh, quercetin and theoflavins. Now, you can go buy quercetin and theoflavins at any natural food store. Theoflavins are extracts of regular tea. So you might say, well, why don't I just drink the tea? And quercetin is in lots of foods. Well, you get a little bit more here. Do remember my rule about supplements. Not more than five days a week because it's sort of like drinking coffee or smoking cigarettes or using heroin or cocaine. The body gets adapted to it and needs it on a continuing basis when you do it every day. I honestly think that it should be WWO, Wednesday and the weekend off. But that strikes me as not quite enough either. So you might say, will you please make up your mind and tell me what you think uh, people should be doing? Well, I do think they should do WWO, Wednesday and the weekend off, one week, and then maybe Monday through Friday the next week. So four alternate with five days strikes me as about right so as not to get habituated to whatever it is that you're doing. Now, is there a time and a place like an insulin-dependent diabetic needs their insulin on an everyday basis? You don't say Wednesday and the weekend off to an insulin-dependent diabetic. So what's the balance? The balance is you have to have a best guess. I use the word humility. By the way, I was in a conversation with Andy Flesher. How many people here know Andy Flesher? He was in my second son's high school class at Hall High. And um, my older son, Steve, says he's a very smart guy. He's out at Stony Brook now. Um, he studied comparative religions. I'm not sure what he's teaching now. But uh, he was in a strong, strong argument. And we were debating climate. We were debating fires. Oh. Uh, yes, the camp fire in California, to change the subject and keep it the same. Uh, that's what we were discussing. And um, a friend of mine raised the issue about the adverse effects of the Sierra Club in inhibiting uh, forest management by the government, by bringing lawsuits in court to stop them from doing this, that, and the other. And I'm not saying they did or they didn't. All I'm telling you, and I've, I've tried to make this point here in West Hartford. I'm not sure I ever got it published. There is way, there is not nearly enough thinning of the underbrush here in West Hartford. We are a fire trap. And you may say, yeah, but we're getting all this rain. Look, you ought to be planning your contingencies. You really ought to be thinking about the possibility of fire. I can remember a couple years back, it was really dry. As a matter of fact, after that, uh, I lost a couple of pine trees on my property because they'd gotten sick and weakened and they were old anyhow, but they were tall and it made a ton of damage and cost me a huge amount of money to get rid of them. And um, in October 31st, I guess it was, whatever Halloween was in 2011, I literally had a tree fall on my house. And then I had to cut down all the trees that were around my house, uh, that, not all the trees on the property, but all the trees that could fall on my house in order to prevent that from recurring. My insurance company is USAA and they were really wonderful, but it took a long time to the, get them to get that hole in the roof corrected. Anyhow, um, I think that West Hartford is a fire trap, and I think that we should promote thinning, appropriate thinning of wildlife. I even think it should be done on these wild properties near Mountain Road. There's a big 
Forest Preserve. That is a fire trap waiting to happen. The proper concept is land management. And you may say, yes, but that's where the bears and the deer and the squirrels and the rabbits and the whatever live, the pheasants, uh, the turkeys. I have turkeys in my yard. I love to see those turkeys. I wasn't so happy when I saw the bear in my yard, uh, but uh, uh, I call it my pet bear. I have pictures of it. <clears throat> Anyhow, one day it was at my back door and I ran out shouting at it and it ran away. <laughs> Imagine that. Me, me, little old moi, scaring a bear. <laughs> Anyhow, enough of that. So, um, theoflavins plus quercetin, uh, which is a natural antioxidant, I think it's in watermelon, all kinds of other things. Q U E R C E T I N. And theoflavins, T H E A F L A V I N S, theoflavins. So uh, that's that. Now let's see, where's my uh, sheet? Oh, oh. Let's go back to see. Now, uh, on TV, I saw advertised Zona Plus. Zona Plus is this instrument that you hold like this. And if you hold it and it's got a gadget on it, and I'm sure it's not cheap, and it says you can cure high blood pressure. That's true, but why make high blood pressure occur? It's one of the made to happen conditions. If you do things a certain way, it does not occur. It can be reversed and cured and you can get off your medication like a person can get off their diabetic medication in the vast, vast, vast majority of times. But as a transition, it's not a bad idea. Probably 15, no, probably 20, 25 years ago, I wrote a handout on light isometric tensing. That's what Zona Plus is. That's when I wrote about it. All right, now, oh, um, it's not that I recommend bread, but if you're going to get a bread, uh, Trader Joe's has at a quite reasonable price Ezekiel 4.9. That is a sprouted bread. I think that's probably the best bread. There are other sprouted breads on the market, but somehow that one catches my ideas. Uh, by the way, if you don't know how to make miso soup with seaweed, that's a good idea. At uh, Whole Foods, they have uh, uh, a Japanese miso uh, that uh, I think is very high quality. Now, um, how are we going to deal with the overeating of the holidays to prevent those diseases, to reverse them, and so on? You have to look at things in a broad view. Our culture wants us to eat, 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 eat. In fact, one of the most famous cardiologists in the United States, Steve Nissen, N-I-S-S-E-N, at the Cleveland Clinic made a statement today that uh, heart disease, the improvement in reducing heart disease has been stopped by the obesity epidemic. In other words, we were doing great at reducing heart disease by getting people to change their diet, change their exercise, uh, go on proper medications, have your angioplasty bypass surgery, and the frequency of heart disease and heart disease death was going down, 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 down. But the incidence of, of overweight began to increase, 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 and that has neutralized the improvement, stopped the improvement in the incidence of heart disease and heart attack and cardiac death. And he's absolutely correct about that. Yes, mea culpa, I'm not perfect in my own whatevers, and we could all do better. And you might say, oh, look, there, it's a constant struggle for many, many people. And you have to stay as focused as you can. So many, too many people gain 10 pounds every year between Thanksgiving and January 3rd. It is an eat fest, and that's great that we can celebrate that, but we have gone too far with our eating. So now, now I'm going to tell you a story that I hope I get done before this program finishes, because we have four minutes, three and a half minutes left. I took a train to New York City because my grandson was having his bar mitzvah. And uh, when I came back on the train, I said, there, wasn't two there were not two empty seats. I'm one of those, so to speak, antisocial people, except when it comes to my patients. 
And um, so I had to sit down beside somebody. So I sat down beside this guy who um, uh, eventually we started talking, not right away. And uh, he tells me that he went Yale Divinity School and uh, he graduated, but that wasn't his thing. And he moved to New York and he became a very successful investor. And now he was on the train headed up to Northampton to do a men's meditation group. Well, uh, it's, I'm at that point where it's a little hard to turn my head the full 180 degrees without moving like that. So um, I didn't quite look at him. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't recognize his face, but I could tell he was lean, he was trim, he was muscular, and I did guess his age. I guessed 86, he was 87, and that's sort of because I'm pretty good at guessing ages. I'm much better at guessing heights. Uh, for some reason, I have a talent at guessing people's height. Um, and um, not so good at weight, uh, but height. So anyhow, he tells me that he became a Buddhist, and he talks about, he said this phrase, no body, no mind. That's a sort of a medita meditative state. Meditation is good for you. It clears out things. You quit worrying about stuff. You quit running around like a squirrel so over-focused on getting that acorn and running back up the tree and putting it away for winter. You sort of get some distance in life. When he said that, that immediately triggered the movie The Last Samurai with Tom Cruise, which is a good movie. I like Tom Cruise as an actor. I don't know if he's a jerk. I like him as an actor. And in this, he ends up tying on the third round the master swordsman after this kid says to him, too many minds. And that's what we all have. We all have too many minds. So what happens when you want to eat? First of all, you can clear your mind and say, no body, no mind. You do not have to listen to that hunger in your body. You're not going to get cancer. You're not going to die. You're not going to get a heart attack. You're going to be just fine. So no body and no mind. And no mind means you don't have to think about it. You don't have to focus on it. If you could not eat, nothing would happen to you. You'd be fine. Well, we better start thinking that way for the holidays. Well, I sort of got the story in there. No body, no mind. Practice that. Think about uh, a little more exercise and a little more cooked vegetables and vegetable soup during the holidays. I am H. Robert Silverstein, MD, for the Preventive Medicine Center. Good day and God bless you all. And do be careful and safe during the holiday period. Please think about what I've said today.